Hello there, you know what they say, first the worst, second the best. Welcome to my second channel. <laughs> um, today I wanted to talk about this bad boy behind me. I think when you watch like booktube videos, um, you're used to seeing sweeping bookcases behind people that are stunning, show-stopping, gorgeous, immaculately organised. And I'm living in rented accommodation <laughs> in London, like I don't have the facilities to have these amazing bookshelves. So this is kind of what we're working with. And I wanted to show you, I wanted to give you a tour. Um, I also have books kind of dotted <laughs> everywhere in this flat, but this is my pride and joy. This is the Pièce de Résistance. This is the rainbow bookshelf. And I just thought that I would show you around, show you what's on there, um, give you some mini reviews, and let's get going. First and foremost, I need you to know that this arose <laughs> out of boredom and procrastination, but if I make a video out of it, then technically it's work. I'm telling you, work smart, not hard. Anyways, let's get going. I feel like pink <laughs> doesn't really belong at the beginning, but I didn't know where else to sort of put it, so we'll start with the pink book. So we have this one, this is Winter in Sokcho. This is a book about uh, the town Sokcho uh, in between South and North Korea, so it's right on the border. It's quite a strange little book, you know, not necessarily something I would recommend, but it was cool to read. Um, this one is called My Year of Rest and Relaxation, and this is all about someone who is um, suffering quite badly with their mental health, and you get quite an interesting, nuanced perspective on... Oh dear. Perspective on mental health, and um, I think it is really delicately... Oh no. It's really um, honest and candid and impressive. The next book is Ready Player One. I have not read this yet, but I intend to. This one is called African American Christmas Stories. Um, I bought this for my Christmas video on my main channel. It did not arrive in time. <laughs> it arrived in March, so uh, that was not that helpful. Um, how are we going to stop this from happening? Oh damn. Okay, ignore the water bottle. I appreciate this kind of kills the aesthetic a little bit, but <laughs> I needed this. This is essential for holding this together and holding my patients together <laughs> as well. The next book is this one. This is The Housekeeper and the Professor. This is about a professor who has like an eight minute memory, I think, and he really relies on maths as a sense of hope. And so I'm really intrigued to read that one. This, oh my lord, Haruki Murakami. Wow, what an author, what a storyteller. Um, Norwegian Wood is fantastic, and that is all I'll say on that. The next book is The Scarlet Letter. Absolutely iconic book, and not just because it inspired EZA starring Emma Stone. <laughs> it is all about the cult of virginity, patriarchy, the idea of a woman's purity, um, and it's an absolute classic. This one is called The Happiness Advantage, and this is a book I had to read for work. Can you hear the police cars going past? This video is a hot mess. This is Small Island. The Awakening and Other Stories. Love is a Mixtape is by Rob Sheffield, who is a, an editor, a contributing editor. Whoop! <laughs> that yeeted out of the frame. Um, this is by Rob Sheffield, who is a contributing editor for Rolling Stone magazine, and it's his memoir um, all about his um, wife, who he sadly lost very young. Next book is To Have and Have Not by Ernest Hemingway. Do Not Say We Have Nothing is about Tiananmen Square and the aftermath of the protests there. We have The Circle, which I've only heard bad reviews about, and since talking about it online, I've heard even more bad reviews. Um, so can't wait to give that one a whirl. Then we have Crazy Rich Asians, which I watched the film version of this on my flight to Singapore, and it paints Singapore in like the coolest light, and so um, yeah, I would love to read the book version as well. We have a bit of F. Scott Fitzgerald, The Great Gatsby, absolute banger, classic of a book. The Third Man by Graham Greene, loved Brighton Rock, did not love this, not going to lie. It really reminded me of The Secret Agent by Joseph Conrad, if any of you have read that. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, again, a bit of a classic. This one is Lamona's Tale. This is about a woman who is in prison and um, the people who are the reason she's in prison go to visit her and I thought it was so boring. I loved the concept, hated the execution. <laughs> um, the Chrysalids. Um, I have not read that yet, but intend to. I don't even know what it's about. Escott Fitzgerald, The Diamond as Big as the Ritz. I really like Fitzgerald's writing. I have, I think, all of his books now. Ray Bradbury, Fahrenheit 451. This is about book burnings and censorship. It's a kind of dystopia. I actually read this um, in my own time, just before my A-level exams, and then the, a section from that book was the... Uh, unseen extract in my exam, and I was buzzing my tits off. That was 
so lucky. We then have Dead Poet Society, which I read for my Dark Academia video um, and watched the film version as well, of course. Uh, Stargirl, still kind of hate this cover, but she does fit very perfectly on the bookshelf, so um, I'll let it slide. Also kind of hated the book, but <laughs> we won't talk about that. Um, this is called The Charioteer. This was recently sent to me to my P.O. box by a lovely viewer, and I'm looking forward to reading that. Cutting for Stone. This was a gift from my girlfriend. We have this one. We are all completely beside ourselves. Probably one of the best plot twists of all time. Um, it's really, really cool. And I, I can't really explain what it's about without giving that away, so I just, frankly, will not. <laughs> um, we have Man and Superman by... Bernard Shaw. We have The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I am skeptical about this book, but I've only heard good things, and it's basically about a lady who gets to the end of her life, and she's in a library, I think, where she can see um, all the different routes that her life could have taken if she'd made different decisions um, and different choices, and I love the concept, so I'm intrigued to read it. Anne of Green Gables I have for an upcoming video, which you will see. The Secret Life of Bees. Very much on the lookout for a better cover of this book because I'm not into that one at all. Um, Maya Angelou, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. I read a letter to my daughter recently, and it was, frankly, beautiful and so captivating and just like a big hug and so I'm really intrigued to read this as well. Lost at Sea I picked up in Poundland. They were stocking um, a John Ronson book and I really like John Ronson. I love the way he thinks. I love the way that he shares kind of pop psychology and so I picked that one up as well. The House on Mango Street was a gorgeous book. It's about a community of Latinas in Chicago. Then we have Notes of a Crocodile. Next up we have Papillon, which I think is about someone who breaks out of prison, maybe? This book is breaking out of its space on the shelf. We then have My Policeman. This is the film that Harry Styles is currently starring in. Um, the book, though, is fantastic. So, if you want a quick uh, read, I would highly recommend that. I really, really enjoyed it. Then we have Confessions of a Mask, Siddhartha, all about spirituality and kind of finding your path in life. We have Christ Stopped at Ebola, I want to say, and this was gifted to me by a viewer. They sent it to my PO box. Um, thank you so, so much, and I'm looking forward to reading that. It's so up my street. Um, the Beekeeper of Aleppo. We have Reef, and then, oh, what an author. This is The Namesake. I was actually listening to a podcast about that just a minute ago. Um, this is American Dirt, which I bought <laughs> last minute when I was doing a book haul and shared it and had a lot of comments saying that this is not so great, just apparently quite controversial in its depictions of Mexicans, I think. So not gonna lie, that one's not a priority <laughs> to get around to reading. Um, this, however, is Natives. This is by Akala, about race and class in the ruins of empire, so in the kind of modern Britain, and it is phenomenal. Um, it's such a good analysis of race, specifically in the UK. Akala writes in such an accessible way. Um, Stephen Spender's poetry. We then have The 39 Steps. Oh wow, I went to see this uh, in the West End um, for my drama GCSE and I wrote a report on it. <laughs> um, we have Call Me By Your Name. This is Night Skies with Exit Wounds, a poetry collection by Ocean Vuong. I also read um, On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. Then we have Sally Rooney, Normal People, Icons Only, <laughs> then this is Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, this is a movie tie-in cover, so we'll just appreciate it from this angle. <laughs> this is Train to Pakistan, which I think I'm going to read as part of my Asian readathon. We have the Karamazov, Karamazov Brothers, which <laughs> I butcher every time I try to say it, and then Tintin, The Adventures of Tintin, which I also have for a YouTube video. Then we have these kind of miscellaneous books. We have Word Perfect by Susie Dent, the queen of etymology and lexicography. I love her with my whole heart. <laughs> dream dinner party guest right there. Speaking of dream dinner party guests, Amatav Gosh. Um, this is Sea of Poppies. I loved The Hungry Tide. Um, and I'm excited to read this one as well. Charles Bukowski, Love is a Dog from Hell. Mm, controversial man, but I I think this collection of poetry is very fascinating. Um, Cinnamon Gardens by Sham Salvadori. Salvadori is possibly my favourite writer. I love him. And Cinnamon Gardens sort of gives you an insight into domestic life in Sri Lanka. And then we have Normal People, the scripts. So this is kind of like um, the transcript version of Normal People, um, the Sally Rooney book, which was then converted into a BBC3 show. So there you have it. That is my rainbow bookshelf. Thank you for coming. Have a lovely day and I'll catch you next time. And subscribe. Bye!